Hello, and welcome to the first portion of Operation Parenthood. Today, we're going to be covering the basics of what you need to do to get ready for your new baby. So, most likely if you're here, you just saw this or you have seen this. So what do you do next? You know, maybe this was a child that you'd planned for. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe you're feeling happy and excited. Maybe you're feeling a little reluctant or scared. But what we're here to do today is to make sure that we can change those feelings into positive ones. So the first thing you need to do is contact your healthcare professional. You need to make sure that you are in fact pregnant and that the positive test isn't just due to an influx of hormones. Next, you need to really check in on any medications you're taking. While they may have been safe for you in the past, with a new baby and a new pregnancy, they may no longer be safe for you to take. You need to make sure you're monitoring your blood pressure and your heart rate both of which are very important for making sure that you and your baby stay safe during pregnancy. So what if you're adopting? Each adoption is very different, and each agency that you go through has different sets of rules. There may be different marital requirements. Some agencies require that you be married for at least three to five years. There may be age requirements. So there are some organizations that require there be at least a 40 year age difference. So for example, if you were 44 years of age, you could only adopt a child as old as four years. The cost for adoptions range greatly. However, it is much more expensive to, to adopt internationally than domestically. If you're going domestic, you can expect to spend between $10,000 to $50,000. International will run you between twenty dollars to $50,000. You need to be prepared for questions. It may be difficult to talk about, but to ensure proper development of your child, as at a young age and in the future, you need to talk about their adoption early. Don't make it a taboo subject. Make it a positive subject. And be sure to answer any questions they have without any apprehension. So what if you're a grandparent who's raising their grandchildren? First off, you need to recognize and acknowledge your adjustment period. This may be something that happened suddenly. Maybe you weren't planning to take control of your grandkids. Maybe you were. Either way, it is healthy to talk about your problems and any concerns. You may be feeling anger and resentment for failing to raise your own child correctly. You may be feeling guilty or maybe even lonely. You might feel like you're alone. You may be stressed. You know, you've done this once and now you have to do it again. You had just got your free time back and now you have lost your free time again. You need to make sure you're talking with others to express these emotions. There may be emotional issues with the child. Oftentimes, the child may feel like it's their fault or that they're a bad kid. It's important to talk with them to make sure that they know that this is in fact not true. Nutrition and exercise. So it is recommended that you do continue with any light exercises you were doing previously throughout th your entire pregnancy. You need to remember that you're eating for two. So make sure you're eating foods that are rich in vitamins and nutrients and you want to avoid overeating. Cravings may become strong, but you don't want to gain too much weight. As soon as you find out you're pregnant, and preferably even before conceiving, you should start taking prenatal vitamins. These will help ensure that your, you and your baby are receiving all the vitamins you need for a healthy pregnancy. Try your best to avoid all cigarette smoke and especially avoid any alcohol. Finances. One of the reasons that many new parents feel reluctant when they find out they're pregnant is because they become worried about money. The best way to relinquish these feelings is to sit down and create a budget. Make sure to include things like diapers and formulas and doctor's visits and even hospital bills that you'll have to pay after delivery. Anticipate things early, so as soon as you find out you're pregnant, not later, go ahead and start saving money. Stock up on some diapers and other items like wipes that you know you'll be needing and make big purchases over time. You may be excited to have your entire nursery built and put together. But cribs and changing tables, it all adds up. Try and spread out these big purchases over your pregnancy to make it less of a burden on your wallet. And make sure you don't forget yourself. Make sure to buy yourself a few maternity clothes, or maybe even buy yourself some nice nursing bras. Think about you too. Research. Every crib and all different baby products are very different. They're not all the same, and some are safer than others. So make sure you do your research before making any purchases and make sure to pay attention to recalls. What was safe yesterday may have a new discovered problem tomorrow. There will be many conflicting sources of information. This could come from other parents. Every parent has their own style and way that they like to raise their children. Your parents, 
you know, maybe they raised you a certain way and they expect you to do something the same. Especially make sure you watch out for materials that are based on opinions and not facts. So this includes sources such as Wikipedia and Google searches. You want to look for research-based information. Child proofing. You're going to want to secure any top-heavy furniture to your walls. Children will often start trying to pull up on these items and you don't want them to tip over and fall on top of them. Cover up any electrical outlet plugs and secure drawers and cabinets that may have chemicals inside. Make sure to keep any dangerous items out of reach, such as curling irons or knives. Prepping for the big day. So you've waited your nine months and it, the time is finally here. You want to make sure that you're ready. Have your go bag ready. This should include basic items, such as shampoo, a change of clothes, maybe some comfortable slippers. You want to have a space for baby in order. Even if you can't afford or you didn't want to make a big nursery, you should at least have some basics prepped, including a, a crib, maybe a changing table, having some stuff stocked up. You need to make plans in advance for who's going to do what while you're in the hospital. Who's going to take care of your pets? Who will come to the hospital with you? Which also leads me to talk about the birth plan. Make sure you talk to people in advance to let them know who you want to be in the room with you. You want to avoid any awkward situations and make your birth exactly as you'd like it to be. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact me, but this is the end of the section on getting ready.